let's just go for plan A and no thing, nothing else. No, no plan B. Yeah, just do or die kind of mentality. Right, do or die. Yeah, do or die. <laughs> Hi, it's CK here again, and today I'm going to answer one of the biggest questions that I've been getting a lot, which is, who did my suit? Where did I get my suit from? Well, today I have the man behind the suit with me here, and that is Jevin. Hi everyone, my name is Jevin, and I'm the founder of Common Suits. Right. Hi Jevin, so thanks for spending your time here with me. No problem, So, Pleasure. could you just uh, simply introduce yourself first? Uh, who are you, and what is your business about? Okay, uh, my name is Jevin, and I'm the founder of Common Suits. So Common Suits is actually a premium bespoke clothier uh, based in Singapore and we have uh, outlets in Manila as well. Manila, mm. wow. Mm. Okay. So actually what made you started your journey as an entrepreneur and how do you decide to actually take up being a tailor? Uh, very good question. So on the contrary to what most people believe, right, actually, I do not have any background in tailoring, uh, neither in sewing or in, in fashion at all. So I was actually a finance and marketing major in NUS, from NUS. Uh, I started, I chose this industry uh, because I, I was very passionate. I find myself more passionate in wearing suits in school for interviews and for presentations rather than the subject itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so after graduation, I was questioning, do I really want to be you know, uh, climbing up the corporate ladder, uh, knowing myself that um, it's not quite my character, so I chose to jump into this field, uh, and it's been eight to nine years now. So, wow, mm. wow, okay. So what were the challenges that you actually faced since you mentioned that you didn't have any background and all yeah. that? Uh, tremendous amount of challenges, uh, obviously because it's an uphill battle without knowing anything about this industry, right? So uh, trying to source for a mentor, trying to source for, for information uh, requires a whole lot of, uh, it's almost like taking up a new degree, but without any uh, proper curriculum. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of self-learning needs to be done, and uh, a lot of convincing and uh, of, of talent to join your team. Uh, I think that's probably the, the most difficult part, uh, trying to get talented people, especially in this field, mm -hmm. the talented people are actually the, the much elderly people right. and how do I command their, their trust, how do I get, gain their trust, how do I get their respect uh, as, a, as a young rookie in this field without any knowledge, right? So exactly. that is actually to me a huge challenge. Uh, of course, getting trust from your customers is also very challenging because after all, you are still a very young boy, you know, at 25, 26 years old, like what do you know about tailoring and uh, so th that was very challenging. Right, okay. right. So matter of fact here is that um, I remember when I first got my first suit with you, mm. that was like almost seven or eight years back mm. when we you know, like first started out in our yeah, own career respectively. Correct, correct, correct. Right? So, so along the way, how do you scale up you know, from last time? I still remember your, your, your shop was in an attic yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. until right now you have your own space and <laughs> so on. So how do you actually scale up you know, in, in over the years in such a yeah. competitive industry? So it is true that this line is very competitive because the startup cost is very low. Anybody can just get their friends' measurements, email it over to Vietnam, Thailand to do it, and then they can produce it really. So that was my business model back then. Because uh, when you first graduated, you didn't have much money, right? So you chose, choose the lowest hanging fruit to start with, which is my line. Uh, then, but subsequently, you realize that quality is an issue because you have no control over the supply chain. And, uh, and that quality affects your rate of return of customers, right? Because loyalty then gets a big discount when you don't have a good quality to, to make it consistent. Uh, so, so a bit of a background story is that I, before even you met me in my shop, I was lugging my luggage around. So the luggage was uh, just about this big. It's a, it's a Tommy Hilfiger luggage that I bought at a discount store. Uh, I have to pack like uh, fabric swatches, and some finished samples of shirts and pants and, and jacket, I would just be wearing it. La. And then you didn't have car back then, I had to take bus and Marty in a suit to go to client's house like every day. And uh, it, was, it was a very tough journey, uh, but we saved on every single cent uh, and then built up to have enough money to rent, pay for a deposit for a small little attic. And then, um, but from then on, I already realized that I have to have uh, my own supply chain. It means I must have my own factory, otherwise I cannot have 100% say over my quality. So uh, 
two years down the road, I save up enough, reinvested uh, the profits back into uh, the business again to have our own factory space, buy machinery, and uh, hire even more like experienced workers. Um, so for the you can see for the first good four years, I wasn't really making much money. Right, in fact, I was just drawing very minimum salary, thousand uh, mm. dollars a month. Right. Uh, for for the first four years, so right. it was it was very tough. It was very tough, uh, but um, eventually, when the factory picked up, and um, we were one of the few actually who has a full supply chain uh, mm -hmm. in terms of drafting, making, and finishing um, in Singapore now. Right, right. So the time I hear that in the first four years you weren't really making money. Mm -hmm. So what was the thing that actually kept you going, you know, mm -hmm. persistently? Uh, I think the the desire to survive uh, is very strong. You you need to have a very strong desire to survive in order to for you to pull through like super tough times like that. Mm -hmm. um, and also, there's no no turning back really, right? I mean, I technically can because you, I still got like a degree I can fall back on, but. I think about it at my fourth year, if I really do go back to like banking or like whatever kind of line that uh, that's my degree allows me to, right? Then I got to be start starting in the same, same, same position as what the new grads are starting at. And I'm really much older. Do I really want to do that? So mm, I told myself, not really. Eh? So let's just go for plan A and no thing, nothing else. No, no plan B. Yeah, it's just do or die kind of mentality. Right, do or die. Yeah, do or die. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So, so that's where, right, I think in terms of, you know, your suits-wise, I also noticed that compared to, of course, many other competitors, mm. the pricing is a little mm. bit higher. Mm. So what is the thinking behind that? Is, is mm. it a strategy or what, you know, that, that yeah. to set you apart from the rest? It might, sound, it might sound like it's a strategy, but sadly, it's just a cost plus. <laughs> because... <laughs> okay. uh, Everything okay. So back then, uh, when the suits are a lot cheaper at four hundred, five hundred dollars, uh, because we outsource to to uh, Thailand, to to uh, Malaysia, etc. Um, so cost naturally is a lot lower. So it's a fair markup. But now we are producing everything in Singapore. We're hiring like talented people. Um, you know, Singapore you have to pay CPF, right? <laughs> Singapore you have to pay OT uh, at one point five times. Everything is just more expensive. But in return our customers are getting a lot more assurance. Um, they can, some of them, they are in a hurry, they can actually just drive down to our factory to get it done and say, wow, I actually didn't know that Singapore still has a manufacturing facility for clothes. And I think customers do value that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's point number one, how come our prices are more expensive now? Uh, point number two is that as along the years, we build relationship with like more reputable suppliers, uh, like more reputable Italian fabric mills that Mm, that we all know of behind the scene who are the suppliers for like LVMH products, uh, mm -hmm. who are also the suppliers for like Hugo Boss, Ralph Lawrence kind of products. And we are able to access to these uh, manufacturers as well for their fabrics. And these manufacturers don't come cheap. Like this kind of quality, right? Don't come cheap. But if you compare to off the rack, uh, we are actually do we are actually providing a lot of value. Because uh, we are probably a quarter of their pricing, but it's tailored to your body. Right. So quantum wise, yeah, it's more expensive than other tailors. But value-wise, uh, if comparing to off-the-rack brands, that kind of quality of material and finishing, I think there's a lot more value that are extracting out of common suits. Right. Yeah. So in that case, have you ever come across a point whereby you're worried that the mm. competitors will so-called undercut you with cheaper costs and so on? Uh, I think because tailoring is not really a homogeneous product, it's not like buying like uh, a, 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 you know, rice or toilet paper, right? where everybody presenting the same thing. So in tailoring, there's this thing called a house cut. So kind of like uh, you go to a hairdresser, why, is some, why are some hairdressers more expensive? Because they are known for their experience, they are award winning, etc. Right? So Common Suits has always been known for a very masculine, uh, contemporary, at the same time very timeless kind of house cut, mm. which attracts a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of not just men, but also their partners. Because their partners do want their, their the, the female counterpart, want their male counterpart to look more you know, elegant, taller, slimmer, and younger. Uh, that's number one. And um, I think if you're competing on price war, it works if you are providing a very homogeneous and uh, non-differentiable house cut. But the Compson house cut is quite distinguishable. Lah. So um, and service wise, uh, we everything is produced, produced in-house and in Singapore. So service wise, it's also um, on the ball. Uh, it's not like, Oh, suddenly we can give you an excuse such as a China lockdown 
and then our, our factory is closed in China, we can't ship out your suits mm. by, by your wedding day. Yeah. Uh, we, we have not, not failed any delivery in the past eight or nine years uh, because of this, this, uh, this, issue, um, this service assurance. So I think um, competing on terms of product and we're competing a lot more on like product assurance, quality, and, and also the intangible feeling that they're getting uh, after getting the suit. Right, mm. right. So maybe I just want to ask you a side question, right? Because mm. now that I, I, I remember you mentioned that you have a degree from NUS. Mm. So did your parents actually oppose to you mm. being a tailor? Because it's kind of like, hey, uh, you spent so many years in school yeah. and then now doing this. I think my mom has always been like, you, know, you do whatever you want, like, you know, you know the best, you, you know what would be best for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, every few months she'll be checking like, oh, how is it like, uh, haven't been giving me allowance for a couple of months, <laughs> that kind of thing. Like, but uh, of course, at a point in time when you're down and you are like, you are very stressed out, you do feel, why you should give me this kind of unnecessary pressure. But I think that keeps me going and remind myself that uh, I have to be very practical. Like, I got to work even harder and, and I got to drive even, I got to be even more driven to, to to um, make things work because it's not just about fulfilling your, your dream of being an entrepreneur, but you do have to put food on the table at the end of the day. Yep. Uh, so, but my family members at the start, they, they did question like, why are you making yourself so uh, sing cool for the first like how many years when mm -hmm. your friends are all like drawing like, you know, a comfortable five figure, given the same kind of degree that you have. So uh, I questioned myself a lot. Mm -hmm. When I meet up with my peers who are from my same batch, oh, they're all so comfortable. They start buying house at like, what, their third year in their career. I'm still like drawing $1,000 at my fourth year. Wow. Yeah, so it was, uh, so, it was so bad that uh, the first two year, first year, taking bus, I had to count also like, how much money I have. Right. So like the bus stop, number of buses I can take wow. to reach my customer's house. Uh, because I do have to take a return, return trip as well, right? So, and we easily cut minimum top was like $10 or $20 back then. Uh. So I didn't have the amount of cash. So I had to right. like stop pr uh, prematurely and then I got to walk, drag my luggage and walk to my customer's place. Wow. And there were times where the, 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 the wheels of the, uh, there were one time that the wheel of that, that luggage dropped out. Oh, it was no. very pathetic. Yeah. And, uh, but we just got to bite the bullet and go through it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That uh, was a very tough journey for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now that you're here, right, so what's your long-term vision for Common Suits? Uh, so long-term vision, it changed. La. So mm -hmm. back then we wanted to do, okay, back then we wanted to, I mean, I wanted to make Common Suits a very accessible brand for the mass market. That's why I named Common, right? Like, uh, but eventually I realized um, my personal character is that I, I like quality stuff. I aspire to own like things that last for long, that has good value. And that's why I started to move into the whole uh, owning of the whole supply chain, right? So the, the long-term vision has shifted from being a mass uh, market brand to a premium brand that has uh, value, that's value for, bring good value for customers. Um, and I, after opening up Manila, I realized that, oh, there's a good amount of uh, market share that really appreciates our, our craftsmanship. Uh, and I hope that uh, we can replicate this model in uh, other countries, so perhaps starting with Southeast Asia and then moving to like uh, to other parts of the world, mm. perhaps like Europe, perhaps like Korea, Taiwan, or China. Uh, basically, areas where they have a suit wearing culture, and um, from a business standpoint, it's an easier entry mm -hmm. because there's really an inherent market. Yep. Then comes the question of like you know wow, but it's so competitive, especially in Thailand, especially in Korea. Exactly. So my I think the biggest barrier that people have when it comes to starting a business right, is thinking that they must be the market leader. Mm. It's, to me, it's, I, I think that's a myth. Lah. That's really a mental block to like, why should you be starting a business? In fact, the market size is very big. You shouldn't under, underestimate the market size. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's just one, one, one thing that I, I have for if people ask me like, well, whether they should be starting a business. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I noticed that for common search, right, on social media, there's mm. really a lot, a lot of content that you put up regularly. <laughs> okay. Right. So, so to what extent has social media played a part to your current success? So I think it's also very, uh, I'm very thankful that I'm in this era now 
uh, to be able to leverage on social media to uh, you know bring in traffic to my business. Um, it is true that social media really does uh, did bring in uh, a lot of inquiries and uh, it, it allowed my business to reach uh, other countries as well. So we get orders from US, Europe, Canada, etc. Um, because of social media. Right. So um, it's, I think in the past, this would have been very impossible unless you do have a press, physical presence in that place. But uh, yeah, that uh, number one, it allows for global recognition. Uh, number two, I think you are putting, you, you don't need to put in like crazy amount of marketing dollars like in, in traditional ads. Uh, you just got to spend about ten dollars a day on your Instagram ads, and somebody will just send you a, uh, a DM and like, oh, how much is this this jacket going for? How much is pants going for? Right, uh, but I'm curious. Since you mentioned that inquiries from overseas, so do you actually still do suits for them, even though you can't meet them physically to take their measurements? So for our case in Manila, right, we mm. do have uh, my partner who is very reliable. Uh, I train him up, and he came over for training with my factory guys as well. Mm -hmm. So he's able to do uh, the same kind of measurements I'm doing. Uh, but fitting wise, uh, we have our own team in Singapore to actually look, assess the photos and as a, as a mean, like what kind of changes has to be done. Right. Yeah. So that that has been working out pretty well so far. So in in fact, uh, if you check out commonsuits.ph, you can check out uh, the clients over there what they are wearing, and uh, the quality is not uh, not being compromised. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. No. So so the last question I have for you here is right. So what? Would you like to say to those who also want to be an entrepreneur and mm. to start their own business? I think you gotta be. Maybe I'm a bit backdated lah, but I know the new entrepreneurs they are like, you know, raking millions within the first few years. You know, I only took like, I took like four or five years to turn to sort of see a bit of reward, right? Uh, but people, if if you are like me, you know, a bit more outdated, I think, just really don't be afraid of hard work, yeah. Uh, always think of the reason, like why are you even doing this? Like who, who are, are you doing this for your for your loved ones? I think, um, let hunger and love really be the driver for the reason why you're doing this. And I think that's why, like a lot of uh, people, they say like when men they start to have a family, they start to become more successful because the driven force is no longer about the money, but it's about the people around them and who are they providing for. So um, that was that was really uh, a big driving force for me, lah. Um, then, second point I think is, uh, oh, which I mentioned earlier, which is don't underestimate the power of market size. Like, it's, you, even if you get like 1% of market size, I, I, I think it's going to be good enough for you and your family. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's about the abundant mindset, like, thinking Correct, that you know, yeah. that is sufficient for you. Exactly, even exactly. Yeah. A lot of people just, before even starting, they just feel like, ah, just too much competition. Like, tailor is a lot of competition. And like, look at Far East Plaza, there's so many, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, look at, yeah, so why, why would I even step into it? But if people like you, they will like you. So you'll be able to get your own market share. Yeah, so just work, work a lot on yourself, being, uh, make sure that you are likable, you're reputable. I think reputation is something that also a lot of people should work on rather mm. than just like a one-time-off kind of transaction. So, um, so some, some examples, um, some customers, they came over, they were nice enough to give me, even give me a chance to do up their suit for their wedding when I was still like uh, in my first, second year in my business, right? Uh, well, I screwed up. <laughs> well, I didn't do a good job. But I, I, I didn't just stop there and say like, oh, this is how it is, right? Like business, uh, like just look at the the near-term profit of that, what, $100 for the suit and uh, for good a long-term relationship. In, in fact, I said, like, it's okay, like, I know I, know I screwed up, right? I'm going to redo a new one. I'm going to find a solution to how do I fix this for, for you. Uh, and then in, 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 turn, I, in, in return also, I gave them like a free shirt and all. Sure enough, it's a, it's a loss-making business deal. But uh, I, th I think that gained a lot of trust from the customer in the long run. And, and uh, I think to me, reputation is, is what money cannot really buy. So if you're already starting out a business and all, don't be afraid to make deals that are loss making. Yeah, take it as a, you're really be appreciative that people are even giving even even giving you a, a chance to make a mistake. Uh, I think that's that's the kind of mindset that I my two cents that I will share with like young budding entrepreneurs. So. Yeah. Oh, very well said, very well said. Yeah. So I think one of the key things for me is that over the years I've been doing my suits with Javin. So I really witnessed how he actually scaled up his business step by step. And it's been very inspiring to see how he has also leveraged on the power of social media 
as well as to focus on a few things. And I think the most important thing is the quality that he emphasized on, mm. right? Because I think along the way with all the suits that I make, mm. you know, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely, <laughs> I can sense the difference in the quality that, you know, he's de de delivering and in terms of the attention to detail, mm. right? That is why, right, in terms of the suits, I always go to him. I know he's my go-to guy. So that also kind of reflects, to me, a business reflects, you know, the owner's personality. Mm. Right, so who you are will determine how your business will grow, and that is why when I look at common suits, I really can see that it is Jamie's personality shining through mm. the business itself. All right, so maybe just to end off this video, maybe Jamie, can you share with people how do they get access to you, you know, <laughs> to get suits from you? Okay, uh, very simple. Just go to commonsuits.com, and there's an appointment button, <laughs> right, or you can just DM us yes. on common suits, like uh, on Instagram. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's by appointment basis. Uh, it's not your typical walk-in kind of tailor and so on. All right. Yeah. So do make an appointment with Javin for common suits. Okay. So that will be it. Thank, thank you so you. much, Javin. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you, CK. Man. Thank you very yes, much. Thank you. thank you. So for the rest of you here, of course, if you enjoyed this video, all right, do remember to like this video, comment in the comment section below as well. What have you learned from this, you know, interview today? And of course, don't be, uh, don't forget to actually subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so as to be notified whenever I have a new content. All right, so I look forward to see you guys in the next video.